Now, okay. yes. now HBase is actually a, a real-world use case developed to run on Hadoop on the HDFS system using uh, Yarn and MapReduce. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna look at a, a real uh, use case for big data system. Okay, um, so here is a little bit of history uh, in uh, on relational and distributed databases. Uh, as some of you know, uh, relational databases uh, predate uh, distributed databases. Uh, from the 90s, we had, uh, you know, RDBMS in uh, different varieties. And around 2000, a clear distinction was made between operational databases that are essentially transactional and uh, OLAP, which is for data warehousing and for analytics, because people figured out that the uh, tra the, the constraints of a transactional system uh, were not conducive for uh, doing large volume analytics, okay? And from that, uh, our, that distinction has been followed through uh, to distributed database systems. So now, um, you know, in 2015, you had, of course, the original RDB, RDBMS systems, and you also had NoSQL systems, which are essentially key value columnar stores that were distributed that were developed to run on uh, Hadoop. Okay, and uh, you can see a little bit of um, the history of HBase itself. Um, uh, you know, just like MapReduce and uh, other uh, technologies, uh, Google pioneered uh, uh, you know columnar stores. Uh, the distributed data system. Uh, database that Google used was called Bigtable. And um, they also, uh, um, you know, they, they published uh, the, their first paper on Bigtable in around 2006. And you can see that the uh, first mature version of HBase was released in around 2008. Now, uh, there was a, HBase was initially a sub project of uh, Hadoop, and then uh, eventually it became an Apache top level project. And um, you know you can run HBase in standalone mode, like for example on your laptop or desktop, but that's you know essentially a, a useless situation. It's not going to handle big data. Okay, the uh, uh, HBase. Uh, for real use and real consumption has to be run on HD and HDFS or some kind of distributed file system. Okay, so here is a overview of the Hadoop ecosystem to show you where uh, HBase itself stands. Okay, so you got um, the Hadoop ecosystem has administration tools like Zookeeper. And of course, file systems like HDFS and MapReduce is a computational tool or technique, actually. And then you have a whole bunch of uh, NoSQL databases that are that can be uh, run on Hadoop. Okay, and um, I have listed four different types of NoSQL databases. Uh, the first one is key value stores. Um, the second are document stores like Mongo, DB, and CouchDB, and then you have multi-column stores, and that is where uh, HBase fits in. Okay, big data or big table. Uh, I, I, sorry, that should be big table. Big table, which was the original uh, version of columnar distributed columnar store developed by Google, and um, many of its variants like Hypertable, Cassandra, and HBase all fit in that category, okay? And then there are also some graph DBs uh, that fall in the same category. Now, when you are studying HBase, um, you know, you will also encounter uh, the name Hive, and Hive is more C++ 
SQL-like, but it's actually a workflow tool that's implemented on Hadoop. And we won't be looking into details uh, of Hive, but uh, let me just briefly say that it is just a SQL-like interface to the data that is stored on HDFS. Okay, it is not. It does not have a relational schema. It does not have a, a normalized uh, tabular module. It just has. It is just a SQL-like interface to uh, the data stored on HDFS. Okay, so that gives you an overall picture of where HBase lies inside the uh, Hadoop ecosystem. Okay, so here are four different examples just to show you the, um, you know, diversity. Um, for example, Cloudera uh, has a Hadoop and HCFS. It uses Scoop or Flume for ingesting data into HCFS, and it uses HBase as its uh, distributed uh, database, okay? Uh, by comparison, you look at Google, it has MySQL, essentially as the um, uh, tool for ingesting data into GFS, and it uses a big table. Uh, the, uh, you know, Facebook and Yahoo both use HBase. Um, we will look, at, look into the uses of Zookeeper. It's also a major part of HBase, or in other words, uh, HBase uh, uses some properties of Zookeeper for its own function, okay? So this uh, gives you a good idea of how different, um, you know, how, how diverse uh, the Hadoop ecosystem is, um, even among different uh, enterprises. Okay, uh, let me just make sure that, uh, now if you have any questions, you can stop me, uh, that's not a problem. Um, but otherwise, I will continue. Okay. Uh, okay. So before we go into uh, the details of distributed databases and HPS itself, um, let's have a quick refresher on relational databases. Okay. So that we understand why. Relational databases do not work for big data, okay? So the main feature of relational databases uh, is that they support ACID transactions. And uh, you may know, some of you may know what that means. ACID is an acronym for atomic, consistent, isolated, and durable, okay? Now this is a this is a major requirement. It is enforced. Any relational database should and only support ACID transactions. Okay, and then when we move on to distributed databases, we will see this is what holds up uh, relational databases from being used for big data okay, to work with large volumes of data. Okay, so in the um, ACID is an acronym. The A stands for atomic. So what we mean by atomic is that each part of a transaction, okay, we are taking a, let's say we are doing a large uh, join and then an insert or update, okay. So every single part of the transaction is treated as a single action, okay, all the different parts of a transaction, transaction are treated as a single action. So the transaction will be executed as a whole or it will fail as a whole. Okay, there, there, there is no intermediate state. There is really no way to have one or two classes or one or two parts of the uh, um, transaction to be implemented while the others fail, okay? So atomic means singular and whole, okay? The, every transaction has to be treated as singular and whole, and it has to be executed as a whole, okay? You cannot have partial implementation or partial execution of a transaction, 
I have shown you a simple um, uh, model on the right hand side. You got customers table, employees table, you got primary keys, customer ID, and employee ID, and then you have an orders table uh, which has the customer ID and employee ID as the uh, foreign keys, and there is a new primary key there which is the order ID, and the orders table is tied to an order details table where you have things like unit price quantity and discount okay so it's a very very simple uh, model that kind of exemplifies all the uh, important features of a uh, relational schema okay so now let's assume that you are trying to create a new order and uh, you are uh, creating an a new order pulling in a customer ID and employer ID and then you are entering an order date okay with a shipping date and a ship address and then you are also um, you know creating a number of rows in the order details table okay now suppose in the transaction your order date does not follow the date format okay let's say for some reason it comes in as a string that does not make sense. It does not. Uh, it is not in the date format. It will never be the case that in an RDBMS you will create an order that has all the other fields entered except the order date because it is not consistent. And okay, so the, the transaction as a whole will fail. That's what atomic means. And the order details will not be created unless the order itself is created, the order record is created. Okay. So now consistent means that you check for all the constraints, okay, all the rules and restrictions of the database, such as constraints and the cascades and triggers. Okay. So um, again, that that in the same example. Okay, you try to enter a date field which was not actually in the date format. Okay, uh, the database will automatically check to see that, uh, you know, whether those uh, entries are consistent, okay, they, whether the formats are consistent, whether the records, uh, um, you know, satisfy other constraints like unique keys and things like that. Every single rule and restriction will be checked for every transaction okay if any part of the transaction violates the constraints then the transaction as a whole fails. okay now the RD rdbms does all this for one purpose okay and that is data integrity okay so the main concern of a relational database is to have uncorrupted data okay you don't have loose hanging records you don't have corrupt fields and things like that the data should always be usable okay that is the main design uh, constraint of any relational database um, so uh, moving on the third constraint is uh, isolation okay so what it simply means is that you have very good concurrency control if you have two different transactions that are trying to manipulate the same piece of data, okay, let's say the same row or the same record in a table or the same field in a uh, record, then it will never happen that one of them does a partial read of the record with an old value while the other one is simultaneously updating that value for that uh, column, okay? So for example, give you an example. Um, again, if, uh, you know, you are trying to change the order date by one day on a whole bunch of records, and somebody else is trying at the same time to ch change the ship dates, uh, shipping dates back by a day, you will, you know, it, it, both of them should happen uh, sequentially, okay, even though the two uh, records are happening almost at the same time, okay. So concurrency control simply means that 
uh, every um, transaction is very well isolated and has and concurrent executions are actually uh, pipelined almost sequential okay so that the, again the goal here is data integrity okay so and then the last thing is of course uh, durable and that simply means that once a transaction is completely executed then the results are persisted on the disk okay so um, you know it's it cannot just uh, after a transaction is executed uh, you cannot go back to an older state okay if it, if a transaction is successfully executed you cannot go back to an older state because of some issue in the system you need uh, you need to actually update or alter or update or uh, insert or delete that record to make a change okay there must be purposeful alteration of the data otherwise the da that result is persistent okay so you can you can already see that uh, as a constraints uh, have been um, you know are, are essentially the, the goal of acid constraints is to maintain very high level of data integrity okay and you can also kind of intuitively see that all of these checks and balances are going to take a lot of time okay and that's exactly why you cannot have large volumes of data stored in data, uh, relation databases um, you know, for example if you're trying to do like five different joins of uh, several tables just to get like you know a million records that's going to take a very long time um, because the tables are normalized and secondly, if you are trying to insert or update any data, then uh, you know each transaction is going to take a long time because all the constraints have to be checked. And then, if you are trying to update one million records, that's going to take even longer. Okay, so um, here is uh, what uh, here is how distributed database systems are envisioned. Okay, and this is going to be very different from uh, uh, the constraints used for relational databases. So the uh, the main design principle here is called the CAP theorem. CAP again is an acronym for uh, consistent, available, and partition tolerant. And I have to say right away that consistent here is different from the consistent in ACID. Okay, in uh, in ACID, consistent stands for uh, checking data types and uniqueness of keys and things like that. Here, consistent consistency means that all replicas of the same data should have the same value across the distributed system. Okay, now um, you know here is where it will really help if you watch the lectures on um, HDFS and MapReduce. So you know that uh, in HDFS, a large amount of data or a large file is chunked up into, into blocks of size 256 MB, and each block is, block is replicated across the entire uh, cluster, okay? And if you think back about how we read data from HDFS, you will know that the client sends out a request to the uh, master node, which contains the metadata on what and which block of which file is stored on uh, which data node. So the uh, master node is simply going to tell the client, is, is simply going to give back to the client three uh, values, okay, for three, for, the, for where the three data nodes are that contain uh, the three replicas of a block. Now, which data node a client goes to to read the data is it depends on a variety of factors. So, if two clients want to read the same file at the same time, they could be accessing the same block from two different data nodes. Okay, so that is why consistency is required. So if you have two users 
uh, querying the system to look at the data, you don't want them getting back different results, which will happen if the two replicas of a block are not consistent, okay? So consistent here means that every replica of every block across the whole distributed system uh, should be the same, okay? Now, it's a different matter whether we can practically enforce this or not, okay? But this is a design principle. Okay? We demand that a distributed database should, ha should be consistent. So the second um, constraint is availability. Okay? We also uh, demand that almost all the nodes in a distributed data system uh, that are live at a given point in time should be available for read or write operations. Okay, now you can see right away that this is the, the consistent and available conditions are going to cause a lot of problems. They don't go together very well. Okay, so this is illustrated on the, uh, in the figure on the right-hand side. Okay, so uh, let's take a very simple example of, um, you know, some, uh, some user trying to insert the final scores of uh, two different players, from two different countries, okay? So the client uh, sends out the insert request to a master node or a leader who then sends out um, or executes the insert operations individually to all the follower nodes, okay? Now, um, you know, because of, uh, you know, transmission delays and network delays, uh, one of the nodes, whichever is farther away from the uh, leader on the rack is going to receive the insert operation later, okay? So you can, I mean, it's very easy to see that uh, two things can happen here. One is the insert operation is immediately executed in follower one, and at that time, two users are accessing the same piece of data. They're gonna be getting back different results. Okay, so one person thinks Germany won, the other person, you know, does not know that yet. So, uh, and this is simply because of the delay, okay? So this violates the consistency uh, condition because, uh, you know, there is, a, uh, there is a time delay, you can see, between the, um, between the two insert operations, and during the time delay, the two, follower nodes are going to have different data. So it's not consistent across the distributed, distributed uh, system. Now, that is, that's happening because we are letting both the nodes be available to the users at the same time. Now, instead, if we lock down follower two till its data gets updated, then everything will be consistent across, across the distributed system. Okay, so um, consistency and availability are kind of mutually exclusive, okay? And what caps, so let me quickly explain also partition tolerance. It simply means that, you know, no matter how many data nodes or racks or the switches are out, the system must continue to operate, okay? So the cap theorem says that given partition tolerance, Okay, if you assume your system has to be partition tolerant, then you can either have consistency or availability, but not both, okay? Uh, that was a conjecture made in 2012, and it has later been mathematically proven. So we know uh, that this is something that we need to consider in designing distributed data, database systems. So if you want a partition tolerant distributed data, database, then you can either design it to be consistent or available, but not both, okay? So that is the main difference between an RDBMS system and distributed databases, okay? So here's a summary, uh, asset consistency, as I said, it's all about database rules, enforcing consistency uh, of data, um, making sure that the transactions are atomic, in other words, uh, they don't get executed partially and so on. And all of that is going to take time. 
so it is not uh, you know it is not conducive for uh, big uh, data large volumes of data now cap consistency assures that every replica of the value spread across the nodes has the same exact value at the same time if you compromise availability okay so you have to design uh, you have to decide let's say you are designing a new distributed database system do you want it to be available do you want every piece of uh, every uh, you know node to be available to the users for queries then it will happen that different users will end up with different uh, results for the same query okay all right so um Hbase is of course a distributed database system and it is built on uh, the Hadoop distributed file system and uh, you know clearly it does not have asset transactions and it is a columnar store so it basically has key values and it is a wide table implementation in other words uh, you know you, you have done a lot of uh, if you you know if you work with RDBMS you often have to do lots of joins to get um, your results back and then you know the results are wide okay you have multiple columns from uh, data uh, the, the columns are made up from data that were in different tables okay so it is in an unnormalized form so the question is um, if you want to reduce the time and the effort and computation, uh, then you can compromise normality for uh, breadth of data. So that's exactly uh, the idea behind HBase. It's a, it's a columnar store. In other words, you can keep on adding columns, okay? Um, without limit almost without limit you can keep on adding adding columns so there is no you don't have to worry about uh, you know certain column values being null uh, uh, in others you know or, or you don't have to worry about uh, the results being very sparse you know you could have a row that has just one value in a column and then nothing for the rest of the columns okay um, because that that is by choice. We choose uh, HBase to be an unnormalized or denormalized implementation. Okay, so that you don't have to spend all the time and computation and other resources on joining normalized tables. Okay, and um, and it, it, this design gives you faster random access of data. Okay, so those are the main. Uh, features that um, were originally uh, built into um, big table and they were inherited uh, by HP okay. so, describe the internal architecture of HP again if you had um, watched the lectures on HDFS and MapReduce a lot of this will be very familiar to you okay um, the design principles are very similar and you will see that many of the features are directly inherited from the HDFS architecture okay, the features of HPS architecture are directly inherited from HPS architecture okay so um, the most important part of uh, HPS architecture are what are called region okay now a region is simply a chunk of um, a columnar table or a columnar store. Okay, so you can see here um, there is one column called key, and then you got a bunch of uh, column families labeled column B, column C, and so on. Okay, now you can imagine this table having uh, maybe 100 million rows. Okay, so that uh, those data are chunked horizontally and you have a start key and an end key okay and these are row keys and that part is called a region okay that horizontal slice uh, through the entire columnar uh, data is called a region okay and 
a region server can contain multiple regions. Okay, you can begin to see the parallel between a region server and a data node. Okay, uh, in data node you have blocks of data stored, and uh, here you have region. Okay, and regions are just uh, parts of uh, the entire uh, the, the the whole file. Okay, the second important part is uh, the H master or the H base master. And we'll look into the details of HMaster uh, soon. But um, the other thing that you see here is the Zookeeper. Now, very briefly, Zookeeper is also, I think I already showed you uh, the Hadoop ecosystem, and, the, and Zookeeper was on it. Uh, it is essentially an administrative tool. Uh, if you want to remember only two things about the Zookeeper, um, that should be configuration management and synchronization, okay? Uh, the Zookeeper, Zookeeper is also a distributed system. Um, you know, it runs on HDFS, and it accomplishes two things, essentially. One is configuration management, and the other is synchronization. And the reason we have Zookeeper is because, you know, many, any application that runs on HDFS needs these two features, okay? You need some kind of a configuration management with, with a bunch of configuration files, and you need um, it's a synchronization, okay? And um, initially, almost uh, every application was building these features, um, you know, into it. Uh, in other words, people were actually trying to write all this into each application. Uh, later on, these two features were extracted out, and you had Zookeeper, um, you know, dedicated to managing uh, just those two uh, operations. And um, so we will see how Zookeeper is leveraged by HBase for uh, synchronization operations. Okay, so this is the HMaster, and you can begin to see that, you know, it's kind of like the name node um, with a few differences, okay? Uh, the, the, the first main function of HMaster is to assign regions to re region servers and keep a record of it, okay? So when you're trying, let's say you have a huge HBase table and you are trying to append um, a million new rows, the HMaster knows which region servers are most active and which are not, okay? And then it picks the ones that are not most active and uh, sends out the new uh, data to that region server to be split up into regions and stored locally. Okay, that's one of the main things that the uh, that H master does. Okay, um, and the second thing it does is when you when it gets the queries from clients, it is responsible for again translating those queries into whatever operations are required to uh, run on the region servers. And it sends out those operations to the region servers. So the Zookeeper uh, uh, is used for uh, tracking which region servers are alive and which are not, okay? Again, um, there are a lot of parallels between this and how HDFS itself operates. Uh, you know that in um, HDFS, the data nodes send uh, periodic heartbeats uh, to the master node, and uh, every often they send a report on all the stored blocks. Okay, the same kind of thing happens here, but the region servers don't do that, uh, you know, the heartbeat and the report. Instead, HMaster leverages Zookeeper to know which uh, region servers are active and which ones are not, okay? So that is the function of Zookeeper in HBase. And again, there is a meta table. Uh, you probably guessed this already. Uh, the meta table stores are a map between the table name, the key ranges, start and end key ranges, the region, and 
maps all that uh, all those key values keys to uh, one value which is the region server so if you want to query a certain file uh, or a certain table from uh, row 100 to row 200 region server the uh, meta table tells you you know like rows 50 to 150 are in this region server and rows 150 to 250 are in the other region server and you have to put together the uh, data okay so that's essentially the architecture of the um, of hbase okay now uh, let me go over write and read operations very briefly so you have a read cache okay every region server has two types of caches one is the block cache which is a read cache and then and the other is a write ahead log okay the write ahead log is used for write operations as you probably guess and the block cache is used for read uh, read operation okay uh, and the mem store is part of the write operation okay so let's look at um, okay let's look at read uh, read operations first very quickly so when you uh, read when you send something uh, to the region server and you try to read the data it reads it stores it in the block cache and sends out the result okay uh, because you know statistically the same data will be queried again will be used again and the next time it doesn't have to go to the region to extract the data you can just send it out from the block cache and the block cache keeps on growing and eventually when it is full you look at the um, the region server figures out the least used part of the block cache least frequently used part of the block cache and just delete it okay so to make more space okay so block cache kind of uh, speeds up read operations um, in the region servers okay now um, write operations so let's say you are executing a put command the first thing that happens is the put command is stored in the read ahead write ahead log okay because write is a time consuming operation one thing that can happen frequently is before the entire write operation is executed uh, something can fail okay maybe the entire region server some uh, goes down or some of the regions are lost okay so then you should be able to recreate uh, the write operation from the write ahead log okay that's essentially the purpose of the write ahead log um, <clears throat> and uh, what the write ahead log does is it uh, it writes into mem store okay which is not uh, in hdf is not the permanent uh, uh, store in the file system but as the name says it is in memory and when that is full it leaks into uh, the HDFS uh, data node as H file. Okay, so H files are simply uh, the blocks and replicas of blocks in HDFS. Okay, so it's um, that is a very simple overview of write operations in uh, H base. So here is a summary: um, the benefits of uh, H base architecture is that it has a strong consistency model so when a write returns all readers will see the same value so you know that uh, uh, availability is restricted and there is a lot of built-in recovery and it is integrated with the uh, with hdfs okay now the uh, issues with h base that are slowly being um uh, worked on or that the write ahead log replay is slow so if something fails and you have to replay the entire write ahead log that's kind of um slow and uh, crash recovery is also slow um and um, you know but uh, with every new version there is always an improvement in speed okay so 